Hey everybody, welcome back to Hoffman Reproduction. Thanks for tuning in with us again today. Well, we are back at the range with our corned buckthorn charcoal black powder. We're going to do some testing. And uh, before I get to that, just to answer a question that I've been getting a lot here from subscribers is charcoal. Number one question I get, what kind should I use? Uh, what is the best kind? What's the best wood? And my answer is use whatever type of wood you have locally available to you. Um, most woods can be turned into charcoal and will make black powder. The thing is, it's just that some are going to make black powder or black powder charcoal that is superior to that of others. Um, pine, pine is the type of wood most guys start with, including myself, because it's readily available and you can make decent quality black powder out of it. It's just that there are others out there that are better. I'm currently using Buckthorn Altar. It's the, the most powerful and the cleanest burning I've found so far. I'm going to be doing some testing here to see just how good we can get in both those categories. But again, use whatever type of wood you have available. In my research I've found several woods that are reportedly supposed to make excellent quality charcoal for black powder, some that you wouldn't think of. Ash, uh, beech, birch, all of those are reported to make excellent black powder that I've not yet uh, experimented with. So don't be picky. Use whatever type of wood you have available and give it a try. It might work excellent, it might not work so well, but it will make some type of black powder. So whatever kind of wood you have available, give it a try. It's just that there are some that are going to work better than others. Okay, so with this powder that we have here today, it is corned. I'm not going to go into detail about the corning process. If you want a really good video on how that is done, go over to my friend Jake Harris's YouTube channel. He runs a channel there called Everything Black Powder and he has an excellent video that will take you step by step how to do that. Uh, the only thing that I did differently than he does on his video, I don't have a hydraulic press. So utilizing my bench vise and let me get close this little handmade piston that I have here this is an old powder flask and hopefully you can see that with a threaded base made out of brass it's about an inch long that I have cut off threads on and then I've turned a little wooden plug and I fill that full of mill powder to about three quarters of the way up put my little wooden piston in there put it in my bench vise and with a long cheater bar on the handle of my vise, press the powder, and that's how I corned mine. Um, not going to be as consistent, not going to generate powder that is quite as powerful if you have a hydraulic press, but for the hobbyist it will work. And it did indeed make some very hard, dense black powder. When uh, these little pucks were done and I popped them out of here, when they dried, they were as hard as rock. So it did that job reasonably. Okay, so my load is exactly the same as last time, same gun, only difference is I'm using our corn, buckthorn, alder, charcoal, black powder, and I'm shooting 60 grains of this, just like last time. Shot number three. Okay, obviously I wasn't calling them out like I was before. I just figured I'd save a step. But uh, those were all in the mid 1600s, so better than our loose grain powder for sure. That was the strongest one there. It, 1,696 feet per second, so using 
the compression method, the corning method, by hand. We're not going to be able to generate powder that is quite as fast if you used a hydraulic press, obviously. I can't exert as much force by hand as a machine can. But uh, a noticeable uptick in the power. So I'll spin the camera around here and show you my cleaning patches to see how this buckthorn alder is doing on the cleanliness factor. Okay, so these are the three cleaning patches that I swabbed the barrel in between shots on. Uh, as you can tell, we're not quite there on the level of Swiss. If I had to make a comparison of the fouling of this powder, I'd say it's about like Go-X. Um, so certainly nothing to hang your head over. Um, lightning fast, generating more power than Go-X does and uh, hey we're making it ourselves so I'm gonna spin the camera around once again and show you how to identify buckthorn alder in the woods okay so you are looking at buckthorn alder this stubby little tree not overly impressive growing right here along this creek I was asked how to identify it and apparently there are several different types of buckthorn alder uh, but I couldn't tell you how to identify the difference you'd have to log on to a tree identification page or something but this is the stuff you're looking for uh, around here in central Ohio it grows in low-lying wet areas which you can see it grows along this creek it's all over along this creek um, grows in clumps like this Let's get a little closer oops you can see the bark it's kind of a smoothish light gray bark it has these little wrinkles present in it. Um, doesn't get real big. I'd say about right there, that's about two, three inches. That's about all the larger it gets, and then it tends to die. And it's considered an invasive species, which is ironic. It's an excellent black powder wood for charcoal, but invasive species. But that's buckthorn alder. Uh, it's early spring here in central Ohio, so I can't show you the leaf. It's got these little, uh, and yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see that, but these little, let's zoom in, these little hanging guys here, berries or fruit, I guess, that's the immature leaf forming up there. Can't show you the leaf, obviously, because they're not out yet. But that is buckthorn alder. And just for a comparison, here's a section of the stuff that is cut and dried and you know you have buckthorn alder it will oxidize this orange color when you cut it especially the interior bark it's a real real uh, deep orange color and that's another sign you've got the kind that is good and suitable for black powder making but just in case you were wondering if homemade black powder is accurate without really trying now granted I was only shooting at 15 yards away that's the grouping of shots that I fired on and off of camera and uh, just to see if it would do okay at a longer distance I backed it up to about 45 yards and I believe that one right there the top hole is the result of a 45 yard shot again without really trying super hard so and I also noticed this corn powder there's a not horrible but significant increase in recoil you can tell you're shooting something that is definitely more powerful so the uh, homemade powder is working well. Uh, I may do one more video that is sort of an accumulation of everything that I have learned over the past year showing things to do and not to do and share that with you guys and then probably move on to some different subjects for those that are getting sick of uh, videos on homemade black powder. I want to do an 18th century bushcraft series I've got some how-to videos on blacksmithing coming up, so all that and more coming your way with Hoffman Reproductions. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you all again next time.